we have the man who leads this particular church in this building. Of course, stick around because we're going to get right in here in just a little bit. We're going to break down everything that's coming up next week on Red Room. And also, our very next live event will begin to talk about it because it's one month from tonight right here back at Vermont Avenue Baptist right. Church. That's right. They're hosting it again yeah. here next month. We'll talk about that and wrap things up. And Pastor Lance will be back to close this out in prayer. But we have a little more business to do first right here. We have our final guest of the night. They are from Torrance, California. How about that, everybody? Ooh. Yes, they started out as Zoe, uh, of course, in 2005. Robert Tyler. Uh, Zoe now. Zoe now. Oh, uh, I missed a word there. Zoe now, yes. Robert Tyler and Gene Copley were the original members after a few members. Greg Wheatstock joined the band. Robert Tyler, at an early age, wanted to be a musician. Uh, but would not really perform in front of people until 1977, being influenced by the Beatles, then after becoming a Christian, Phil Kagey, second chapter of Acts, wow. Red Band, Barnabas. Wow. But the songs that he's written doesn't sound like any of these influences. He wants their band to reach the lost with the saving news that the grace of Jesus is there for all. Amen. Gene Copley is influenced at a Led Zeppelin concert at the Forum in Inglewood, California. After being in many bands, he ran into Robert Tyler in 1985. They hung out, then they lost contact until 2001. Then, on a whim, they were in a studio together and ended up playing some heavy metal, believe it or not. John Bonham and Simon Wright as the biggest influences. Greg Wheatstock came along to fill in while the other bass player was healing from a knee replacement. The bassist came to rehearsal and asked Greg if he would like to join permanently. All right. And is one of the three fixtures. Greg performed in many bands over the years, but now he's actually writing songs for his solo project when he's not performing in the band. From Torrance, California, please welcome, closing us out, bringing the house down tonight, please welcome Three Days in the Grave. Uh, first song that we're going to do is actually one of the songs that we did in that studio setting. The music and the lyrics came all at one time. And if anybody writes songs, they, they know that that's, that doesn't happen very frequently. And I heard them talking earlier about songs that have taken a long time. One of the other songs I'm going to do, I first wrote in 1983 and then put it in a guitar case. And it came out of the guitar case in 2011. Wow. Yeah. And it got completed. So oh. that's uh, how God works. And, you know, um, last time, the first time that I played here afterwards, Pastor Lance and I ended up uh, sitting down and hanging out and talking. And then a couple of uh, months back, he uh, asked me to be an associate pastor here at this church. Me, man, brother, me, brother. So I, I was very blessed at that. And um, I'm so thankful for this church. And when he was talking about the book of Acts, where everybody gathered together and had all things in common, when we gather here in the little, either here in the sanctuary or over in the little room, we have all things in common. We have fellowship with Jesus. Amen. And that's all it's about. <laughs> and this song is basically about called You Got to Believe. <laughs>
know, um, guitar is a little bit of Alec tune. I wanted to tune it really quick. So if Greg can say a little something, it would be nice. A little something. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
was really blessed by each one of them. Amen. And the thing is, is that um, with a voice like mine, there's nothing else left but for heavy metal. Because I can't <laughs> sing I can't sing like them. You know, and God knew that I wanted to be a musician, but doing what I'm doing is what I can sing. I can't sing like my brothers over here. They've got awesome voices. I'm, I'm really blessed by them, you know. But God found a place where I belong. And what heavy metal was not what I was looking for. Gene and I used to do an acoustic thing at coffee shops with, with acoustic guitars and sitars and things like that. This is farthest away from that as it can be. And, but God knows what he's doing. And a lot of these songs that we're, we're playing tonight, they really wrote themselves. Last song that I wrote, you know, between uh, Mr. Bruce and I, we were working on that song, and he helped me kind of fine-tune that song. I'm really thankful for Bruce for that. All right, bro. I'm giving, I'm giving God the credit, but he used you to help find him that okay, bro? All right. You know, gold can't buy eternal life. And we go chasing after gold and, and things that we think we're going to, we're going to be able to hold on to. They slip out of our hands. The minute we stop breathing, they're gone. And then there's a bunch of family members fighting over that stuff. Let's, when we stand before God one day, he's going to take all of the works that we've ever done in life. He's going to set a fire to them. And the scripture says, there's no other foundation than Jesus. And then when you build on that foundation, be careful what kind of materials you use. Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. The gold, the precious stones, and the silver, those things are pure motives. The uh, wood, hay, and stubble, those are things that come from selfish motives, the ones that say, here, look at me. All I know is that God pulled me up from the bottom and anything that I may be is what he made me because I didn't make myself another scripture says oh man remember the pit from which you were dug so this song is called gold can't buy <laughs>
Shame on you, Brad, for stealing my scripture. But I'm, I'm going to do it again anyway. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, the, the second part of that is, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And that's why we're here sharing Christ's love and his music with you. Because we want to see people saved. If you are saved, we want you to walk out of here stronger than you were before you walked in. So either you're being saved or you're being edified. But something in the spirit is transpiring, and that's why we play. We're not trying to lift ourselves up seriously. Because the only true musician in this room was the bass player. So anyway. <laughs> but I'm working on it. Christ's love for us. That's what this next song is about. It's basically Jesus reaching down at me when I was at my lowest spot. He pulled me up.
asked me what my favorite song was, that one's it. Because yeah. I really, that, I started that song in 83, ended up in 2012. About 20 minutes later, my now ex-wife pulled a knife on me and tried to stab me right after that song was written. So not only did it only tell me that I'm not supposed to be with her anymore, yeah. but it told me that God had planned for that song and that there was some power in it. So one of my friends at work, who was a Buddhist, listened to that song and now he's a Christian. So if, God, if he was the only one that got saved from that song, it said that all the angels rejoiced in heaven when, he, when one person got saved. So there was a whole big party going on in heaven when my friend gave his heart to Jesus. But then I got a chance to lead his wife in the sinner's prayer too, so that was two souls. And I'm really thankful for the job that God gave me. My friend Randall here met him back in 1993 at the hospital. We've been friends ever since. But um, I've gotten a chance to pray with a few people right before they leave this planet. And, we, and they, they accepted Jesus, and a day later they were gone. Amen. So I, I know that God has me there for a purpose, but I know that God brought me to this building for a purpose. Yes. I got into the medical field because I was actually studying to be a minister, and my father kicked me out of the house because he didn't want a Jesus freak in the house. So I ended up going into the military, but I didn't want to kill people. So I got into the medical field. I just uh, got my 30-year pin at the place that I worked, at the hospital I worked at. Right. So God directed my path. I thought what was going to be a bad situation, God turned for good. Right. Spent 12 years in the military, but it taught me what I was able to do but it also taught me when I pray and seek God that he will bring me through it. And I prayed very frequently when I was there that God would just bring me through whatever it was that I was learning or what I was supposed to go through. <clears throat> so while I was, my, my stay in the military also brought me closer to the one who created me. And this song is called The One That Created You. <laughs>
be a song I heard up there of train. And who has uh, their ticket for the train? Who bought your ticket for the train? Can anybody tell me who bought your ticket for the train? It's called the Jesus train. And he bought your ticket. All you have to do is just walk up and receive it. But it could be like you having a million dollars offered to you, but you never do anything with it. You have an account, your name is on it, but you never go and uh, use the ATM. You never go to the bank and get draw some money out. So a million dollars in that bank account is doing you no good because you don't use it. The ticket for this train, if you don't accept it and you just leave it laying on the desk, when that train takes off, very sorry. Wow. to do it the original way he wrote it.
what you got? Someday that the rest of the band will be able to uh, join the church and take off from it. Well, um, what one of the things the first the Sunday that I came, the coolest part about that was is that, and I alluded to a little bit about, and he did too, about the second chapter of Acts, how the minute everybody was together and they had all things in common. We get together and we eat, we fellowship. We talk about Jesus, and I, sometimes I just feel, you know, I know that Jesus is in our presence when we're talking about the Lord. But I just feel like a lot of other fellowships miss it there because they don't sit and eat, break bread, and talk about Jesus. They go out to restaurants, break bread, and talk about the football score, the basketball score. Uh, which horse came in second? You know, crazy things like that. Nothing that, <clears throat> nothing that is eternal. Tell us musically what's going to be keeping you and the band busy here in the next few months. Uh, more performing, and songwriting, a little bit of all of it. Well, we, we have a person who's uh, a recording engineer, and we're going to be going into the studio, and. Um, He's got a new program for, for drums and everything, so it's going to really be bringing everything really tighter as it goes for uh, recording stuff. And it, it's going to be a blessing. When you guys are rocking the house out as you are now, what's the biggest message of this hope and inspiration and encouragement that you want to leave? Uh, whoever is watching tonight on Facebook and online or even here in person, and what's that message of hope that you want to leave them as they're getting ready to take it back to their communities and their churches in which they serve? I want you, each person in your mind, picture really quick a bruised and battered Savior who was knelt upon the cross. That each one of those stripes that were placed upon him was placed upon him for you. That by each one of those stripes, you were healed not only spiritually, but physically, 
emotionally. Thing is, is if you don't take it from him, you won't have it. You have not because you ask not. And then sometimes you do ask, but you ask amiss because you ask for things that are to just throw upon your lusts. So we as, uh, as people need to receive the love that the Savior gave and that, that, that love was shown when he was beaten, bruised. But not only that, he rose on the third day. And after he rose on the third day, he is standing beside the throne of God, Amen. making intercession for each one of us. Think about this. He, he, knows, he knows you. He knows the number of the hairs of your head. Yes, he, does. he knows every little pain. He, know, he sees the things that you went through as a kid. He sees those things when you were abused by the bullies or you were abused by your father or your mother, when your brothers or your sisters said things to you that uh, broke your heart. Guess what? Those things broke his heart too. Now we need to ask Christ to break our heart with the things that break his heart yeah. so that our heart will open up to him and we can receive the fullness of Christ into our heart. Amen. That is what I would leave with the preach. Amen. 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 We can go on down the room just introduce yourselves, uh, your room and the band, uh, just uh, tell everyone watching out there a little bit about you. Uh, well, my name is Gene, uh, and I'm the drummer of the band. Woo! And um, I've known Robert since 1985. Um, we we were in a band back then, but it didn't go anywhere. And then um, years later, we lost contact. And then we hooked up again back in, I think it was 2000 or 2001. And we started doing a coffee shop acoustic stuff. And then, um, like you said earlier, one day we just went into the studio and me and another friend of mine convinced him to start playing rock and roll. He wasn't, he was, he was against it. He wasn't planning on it. He wasn't planning on it. And he said, I don't want to do it. I said, come on, man, just do it one time, one time. So he sat there and wrote 12 songs in a two hour period, 12 songs. Wow. By just at the top of his head, one of them we did tonight, you got to believe. But, and he just, it was like, it was, it was amazing how God was just in there. And we had a little frost that we put in the middle of the floor and we, we recorded it. And the guy that played the bass for us was a guitar player. But, it sounded good. Everybody loved it, you know. And people played it for. Um, they said at that time we said we sounded like Big Brother Holy Company. The music, when the music was sounded, because you got to believe it was totally different. It, didn't, it, didn't, it wasn't that kind of feel. It had a totally different feel to it. So that song's come a long way. And you know, um, being in three days in the grave has really been a blessing to me as far as not just having my friends and meeting Greg, but just. My spiritual walk with the Lord. You know, I've, had a, I've had a lot of things in my life happen. Um, with, you know, I have kids. Uh, my kid's mom leaving me to come and single dad. I have an autistic son. Everything's a struggle. You know, I became homeless because of the pandemic. And God just, you know, I lost everything, you know. And, and you might as well say I was joking. I lost everything. Uh, I ended up in the shelter. And by the grace of God and my, my faith, God has brought everything back. Um, and my youngest, my youngest son, he's way better than he was before. You know, he get the help he needs, and you know, God is God is good. He never, he never Amen. turns his back on you. He's always there for you. So if anybody out there has doubts, I'm gonna tell you, Jesus is real. Amen. He's real. He's, he's alive. I'm telling you, he's, he's 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 brought me out of bad situations in my life. Uh, when COVID was when, when COVID was around, um, I was in the shelter, Union Rescue Mission. There was people dying in there. Uh, there was a gentleman in my my dorm that had it. And by the grace of God, me and my kids didn't have it. We didn't have it. We didn't have it. And people were dying in there. So God has kept me from COVID. Um, he's just, he's always just, you know, I have a little story I want to say. One day I was walking down the street. You know, God told me to share this. I don't know why. But one day I was walking down the street. You know, it's really windy outside. I said, Lord, you know, I. I need to I need to know that you're with me. You know, I was having, you know, something on the monkey side, I don't remember. And it was funny because it was really windy outside. And I looked down at the ground and there was a dollar bill laying flat on the ground. 
Not even blonde. And the wig was just blonde. It was like hair was blonde and blonde. Everything else blonde. It was like God just held that dollar there in place. And I was like, Lord, that's from you. Because why, why wasn't it blown away like everything else? You know? So, you know, God uses little things like that to show me that he is there for me. Amen. You know? Amen. And, I, and I'm thankful. I'm thankful for my brothers. Because they, they helped me out, you know. And um, meeting Greg was a blessing. And, and I really love these guys. I'm Greg, and uh, you know I'm the I'm the baby in the band. <laughs> so they don't have to change my diapers or anything. <laughs> <laughs> but you, but you know, the uh, spiritual ones. We call them we call them Mr. Grumpy. They, they talk, my my bandmates talk about blessings, you know. Mike was mentioned, the previous bass player, and he, he paved the way for me. And God is so amazing. And you know, I'm realizing it right here tonight, you know, right here tonight, man, that these guys are talking about rock and roll. Now, if they were playing that other stuff, I wouldn't have joined the band. You know, I'm a metal dude, you know. I don't know why, but the songs I write, they're not metal. It's like uh, Robert was saying, how am I writing metal songs? Why am I singing metal? I don't know, who knows? Maybe God wanted him to sing metal, so I joined the band. You know? Like, he's putting something together here. And I'm here, and I'm listening to Pastor Lent. You know, and he's holding that book up and saying, this, man, read this. And I'm saying, yeah, man, that's what I got to do. I got to read that. Because that's telling me what's happening. And, uh, you know, things have been revealed. The spirit is being poured out. Yes, it is. You know, like Pastor Lance said. And I mean, I, I heard that many times tonight. It, it was told, it was, it was mentioned by other people. It's the same spirit Amen. that we're hearing. Why are these coincidences happening? We were just talking about this earlier. Why are these coincidences happening? Why is this revival movie coming out? Why is everybody talking about revival? The spirit is being poured out like never before. That's why. It says that in the Bible. It says all this stuff is going to happen. And I'm sitting here. You know, when I joined this band, I didn't believe any of this stuff. You know? I, I was like, yeah, I'm cool with Jesus. He's cool. I'm not saying anything against him. It says those who are not against me are for me. There's another thing that says that those are not for me or against me. I don't know. You know, I'm just trying to figure this all out and learn how to play the bass at the same time. <laughs> but uh, it's all really uh, been a huge blessing. These guys, these guys were nominated for an award before I joined the band with their other bass player. I can thank him for that. Yeah, I didn't do any of that. And then they dragged me out to uh, Nashville. And I meet all these amazing independent musicians. I meet, I, I get uh, thrown into this group of like-minded people that are writing music. A lot of them are, are Christians, by the way. They write beautiful songs and they, they, they have little, little, they insert little uh, seeds in there for their listeners just to hope that they plant something. You know, they're not necessarily a Christian band, but they they plant little seeds. And that's what I try to do with my music, too, that I write. Somebody mentioned uh, about my solo stuff that I've been doing. Uh, I think it was in a, in a little uh, intro. <clears throat> you know, that's how I got into that. I've been writing songs all my life, but I never did anything with them. I got a box full of lyrics at my house. And uh, these guys brought me to Nashville, and I see this amazing uh, world that I didn't know existed. And now I'm writing songs, and I'm putting them on the internet. Wow. You know, I got uh, eight songs on all, all right. the platforms on all the internet. Right. They're my songs that I wrote. You know? And uh, you know, I'm a recovery uh, believer. You know, I came from recovery. Talk about God a lot in recovery, and uh, I, 
was cool with that. And I was even cool with the Jesus part of it. But these guys, you know, these guys opened it up to a bigger picture. Even our yeah. friend uh, Bruce, Bruce over here, we have a common friend, Howard. And Howard is the one that introduced me to these guys. And Howard is the one that took me over to the side and said, hey, you want to do the Jesus, uh, the sinner's prayer with me? And I said, nah, man. I know that thing. And he's all, no, man, do it with me. I'm like, ah, come on, man. You know, we don't have to do that. And he said, okay, if you don't want to, but it'd be really cool. I would really appreciate it if you'd do that with me. And I thought, you know what? Howard would appreciate it. I'll do it for him. So he said the words, and I repeated them. And I didn't think anything of it. But let me tell you something, man. After that day, my life changed. Woo! Little by little. Little by little. Not a lot. It wasn't a miracle. A flash of lightning didn't hit me in that parking lot. We were in a parking lot. Uh, and uh, you know, it took a long time. And God had this two by four that if you start slipping up, it's the good shepherd, you know? He's got that hook thing. That, there goes that sheep. <laughs> you know, whack his knee, you know? He's not, he doesn't not love that sheep. That sheep is going the wrong way. He's not listening. Whack him, he comes back. Get that hook, stick it around his neck, pull him back. It hurts the sheep, but the sheep is back safe with the flock. That's what the good shepherd does, and that's what he did to me. He whacks me with that proverbial two by four. <laughs> If I end up in the hospital, that's the way it goes. You know, when I'm in that hospital, somebody's giving me a Bible. Amen. You know, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I already have one of those. You know, but this is in large print. <laughs> like, All right, it seems to be important to you, just like when Howard told me to say the sinner's prayer. You know, anyway, I'm going on and on and on and on and on. It's <laughs> All right. And praise God. What a wonderful day today. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, John, Ben, uh, Casey Bean is a super supportive guy with the music, and uh, all you guys are just uh, so supportive and um, a huge blessing. And our buzz room, you know, you do so much, and for all the artists that struggle and try to get their music out there, you're blasting it out there, man. Thank you for that. Thank you, Frank. I was sitting there thinking when you were playing, does everybody remember the song, Bye Bye Miss American Pie? Yeah. That's the Don McLean of the Christian music. Right? <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Yeah. There you go. Oh, thank you. Woo. I love Don McLean. <laughs> That's how I'm going to intro you on Friday now. So, uh, the Don McLean of the Christian music. Seriously, the kids. I was listening to all the different influences in everybody's music, but you, it's like all of a sudden that song actually was the other song um, uh, that he wrote. There, he had two really big hits, that one and the other one about the guy who cut his ear off. Yeah, Van <laughs> uh, Vincent. So who are you talking about? Online doesn't know. Who knows? Don McLean. Don McLean. Oh, oh my Reed. Rob, Rob Reed is who they're talking about. <laughs> folks over there. Rob, Rob, Rob Reed. Get, 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 get over here. Get over here. Rob Reed. All right. I'll come. I'll swap down here. Come on. Sit right there. I'll break. Yeah, anyway, my brother. Uh, 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 I, the first time I got, I heard him. I was really blessed. I'm blessed by you guys, though, because I, what I love, and I love churches that open up to music like this, because I know a lot of churches be like, uh, I don't know if we're going to bring guys like this in. It's a little bit loud. Sometimes we try some music like this. We have tried at my church, and some of the silver hairs, are. it's a little bit hard. But they were very, very forgiving, and, I, and yeah, what they would do is I just see, as soon as we started one of those songs, I just see them go to the ears and turn, make a turning thing. I'm not sure if there's somebody hearing it. But I love churches that, that allow this blessed music to come in too. Because everyone can be reached in a variety of different ways. And we need it's it's the Jesus Revolution movie too. And there's some people unfortunately that are gonna have they're not gonna understand and they're gonna just walk out. 
but God will excise. They're going to get chastised. As you said rightfully, God chastises only those he loves. So he's going to give us the two by four. And hopefully those who, can, who don't understand uh, something that like change, different sounds, just know if God gets the glory and amen. people are being reached for God That's as they right. are with your music, then amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, we were in a church where all of a sudden this guy stood up. They're of the devil. <laughs> the devil's all in this place. Can't you hear it and feel it? And he just turned around and walked out. And we were in a Christian church, though. So. <laughs> but you know what's interesting is in 1979, which was the tail end basically of the Jesus movement, there was a guy named Greg Laurie who was in charge of the Saturday night music night down there. And there was uh, two groups that played Daniel Amos and Sweet Comfort Band. And there's just no way that I was ever going to walk into how great thou art and, and get touched by that because I was a rock and roller, man. I was into Jimi Hendrix and I was into uh, Black Sabbath and uh, I was into that stuff. And there's just no way I was going to. But my friends invited me to this Christian concert. Great glory gave the altar call. I was up there. Wow, I had hair almost down to my butt. I almost do it again. <laughs> I'm, I'm 61 years old and I'm able to still grow hair. At least you got it. Thank you, Jesus. You know? you but um, the the real real honest thing though is when I saw started seeing this movie out, uh, is it reminded me of how God had taken Greg Laurie step by step. Mm -hmm. All right, used him uh, writing tracks. Mm -hmm. Then he's leading people in the sinner's prayer. Mm -hmm. On, on Saturday night music night. And now he's leading uh, coliseums of yes. people to Jesus every August and September. And I'm only saying that not to lift him up, it's lifting Jesus up. Right. And that if we will humble ourselves and present ourselves to as a living sacrifice to Jesus, he'll take us step by step as he wants us to be. Not, not If we exalt ourselves, he'll humble us. We humble ourselves, he'll exalt us. Amen. It, 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 it's all backwards from what they teach you in school. They teach you to step on, on other people just to get above. That is really, it's a dog eat dog world. But we serve a, a, a savior who is totally opposite of this world. Humble yourself and he will lift you up. Amen. Amen. That was drop the mic moment. <laughs> well said, Don. Uh, <laughs> no, he's Don. I mean, Rob McLean. Don. Uh, I mean, Rob McLean. Uh, oh. <laughs> Rob Don McLean. <laughs> I'll take it. That's, that's going to stand yeah. down. <laughs> I'm going to do a cover of Bye Bye Miss America. Oh, yeah. Are you on Friday? Yeah, Are you? We'll see. But we'll now, now he's backtracking ever so slightly. We'll see. Yeah, I'll, I'll remind him a bit on Friday. Don't worry. He forgets he's hosting on Friday. Oh, I, oh boy. Yeah, yeah I'll remember this one. Okay. And if I know, Red's here too, so he'll deal for sure. He won't let you. No. I can get beat. All right, I can do it. Okay, we'll be double team. It's okay. <laughs> that goes back to my earlier comment about how if you really like us or is it glutton of punishment? I'm not sure. I really like, I ah. really, really <laughs> like you. I uh, really, really like, okay, good. Guys, tell us where we can find you musically, keep up with your musical journeys uh, no, along the way. Well, basically on Facebook for right now. We're, uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to use the other forms of uh, media out there. But like I said, we're going to be feeding our brother's drums into this machine and into uh, the, a recording unit, and we're going to get this stuff uh, get this stuff out that's been too long. We look forward to it there. Three days in the grave, everybody. Another hey. hand for Mr. Rob McLean over here. Meet Rob Reed. <laughs>